Hi guys, Robbie Winus here. Today I wanted to talk to you about sensible and latent heat mixtures. If we take a look at the syllabus for 2A2, and I've got highlighted in blue, you can see that sensible and latent heat mixtures is one of the topics you guys need to be familiar with for your exam. And in the description below, we've included a link to this workbook, which is how to solve sensible and latent heat problems. We've got the question we're going to cover in the tutorial today, written out step by step. And we also have this bonus question here, step by step, how to complete it. I recommend, you know, download it, print it off. And then as we're going through this tutorial, follow through on the worksheet and just put pen to paper. Like if there's any, just write any notes you have, if there's anything you don't understand. And then let me know in the comments if there's anything you'd like me to clear up. So the question we're going to work on today is calculate the resulting masses of water and ice when 0.7 kilograms of ice at negative 7 degrees Celsius is dropped into a calorimeter containing 1.9 kilograms of water at 19 degrees Celsius. The calorimeter has a water equivalent of 0.152 kilograms. The specific heat of ice is 2.135 kilojoules per kilogram Celsius. The specific heat of water is 4.183 kilojoules per kilogram Celsius. The latent heat of fusion of ice is 335 kilojoules per kilogram. And the latent heat of evaporation, vaporization of water is 2,257 kilojoules per kilogram. So step number one, write the equation. The equation we'll use to solve it is Q, which is the quantity of heat added or removed in kilojoules, equals your mass in kilograms times your specific heat in kilojoules per kilogram Celsius. That could also be kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin times your temperature rise or temperature decrease. So that's T2 minus T1 in degrees Celsius or degrees Kelvin. It's in degrees. I'm going to use degrees Celsius because all the variables in this question are in degrees Celsius. If they were in degrees Kelvin, I would use Kelvin or if it asks you to convert degrees Celsius to absolute temperature, I would use the Kelvin. Something we're going to do a little different in this question is um, what I usually write these out. It takes quite a bit longer, so I decided to type it out beforehand. I'd like to hear your guys' thoughts in the comments if you like it this way better. I mean, it should make the videos quite a bit quicker. We can get through them faster, which I think is the end result that you guys would want. So the resulting mass of ice and water of the final temperature, that's our unknown. You can see up here it says calculate the resulting masses of water and ice. We have the mass of ice in kilograms, so that's 0 0.7 kilograms. The specific heat of ice in kilojoules per kilogram degrees Celsius. They provided us with that, that's 2.135. So 2.135. We have the latent heat of fusion of ice, 335 kilojoules per kilogram. And the initial temperature of ice, so 0 0.7 kilograms of ice at minus 7 degrees. So that's minus 7 degrees Celsius. And the final temperature of ice in degrees Celsius, so we'll assume that's zero. We'll assume the, that the water, 1.9 kilograms of water doesn't melt all the ice. We have our mass of water in kilograms, so I have 1.9 kilograms plus the water equivalent of the calorimeter, 0.152. I should actually write that in there. So you can see 1.9 kilograms of water at 19 degrees Celsius, and then the calorimeter has a water equivalent of 0 0.152. So if you add those together, that gives you 2.052 kilograms. The specific heat of water is provided above. It's 4.183 kilojoules per kilogram Celsius. The initial temperature of water in degrees Celsius, so calorimeter containing 1.9 kilograms of water at 19 degrees Celsius. 19 degrees Celsius. And the final temperature 
is zero degrees Celsius. State your assumptions for step number three. So we'll assume that when seven kilograms of ice at minus seven degrees Celsius is dropped into a calorometer containing 1.9 kilograms of water, then none of the heat is lost to the surroundings. So that's right here. None of the heat is lost to the surroundings. Step number four is our solution. So we want to show all our steps and check the units in each step. So first we've got to figure out the sensible heat required to raise the temperature of ice at minus seven degrees Celsius to its melting point of zero degrees Celsius. So the equation we'll use is quantity of heat required, which is in kilojoules, equals our mass in kilograms, times our specific heat, which is in kilojoules per kilogram degrees Celsius, times our temperature rise, so that's T2 minus T1 in degrees Celsius. We substitute in our variables. The mass of the ice is 0 0.7 kilograms. The specific heat of ice is 2.135 kilojoules per kilogram degrees C. And then, so our T2, which is 0, and then minus negative 7 degrees. Celsius. So two negatives become a positive. So if we write that out again, that's 0 0.7 kilograms times 2.135 kilojoules per kilogram Celsius times 0 plus 7. So that's 7 degrees Celsius. We have degrees Celsius in the numerator. It's also in the denominator. Same with kilograms. It's in the numerator. In the denominator. We're left with kilojoules and when we wrote out our equation we're looking for the qu quantity of heat required in kilojoules. So then Q in kilojoules equals 0 0.7 times 2.135 times 7. That'll give you 10.4615 kilojoules. So sensible heat required to raise a temperature of 0 0.7, I should put that in, 0 0.7 kilograms of ice at negative 7 degrees Celsius to its melting point of 0 degrees Celsius is 10.4615 kilojoules. So now we need to determine the heat transferred from the water and calorometer in cooling from 19 degrees Celsius to 0 degrees Celsius. So same thing, write our equation. So that's Q in kilojoules equals our mass in kilograms times our specific heat in kilojoules per kilogram zero C times our temperature rise or decrease, so T2 minus T1 in degrees Celsius. So our mass of the water and calorimeter was up here, so 2.052 kilograms. So 2.052 kilograms times the specific heat of water, 4.183 kilojoules per kilogram Celsius times 19 degrees minus 0 degrees Celsius. So 19 degrees Celsius minus zero degrees Celsius. We solve for in the brackets, 19 minus zero is 19, so 2.052 kilograms times 4.183 kilojoules per kilogram degrees Celsius times 19 degrees Celsius. So you got Celsius in the numerator, denominator, so you answer kilograms to cancel out which you're left with kilojoules. You got your quantity of heat in kilojoules you're trying to solve for. So Q in kilojoules is, so 2.052 times 4.183 times 19, that'll give you 163.09 kilojoules. So it's quantity of heat transferred from the water and calorimeter when cooling from 19 degrees C to zero degrees C. So the heat remaining to melt some of the ice 
from water and calorimeter after increasing the temperature of the ice to zero. So the heat that is remaining, so you have 163.09 kilojoules of heat that was initially in the water and calorimeter at 19 degrees. And then to increase the temperature of the ice from negative 7 degrees to zero degrees, we said it would take 10.4615 kilojoules. So 163.09 minus 10.4615, that equals 152.6253 kilojoules. So now we have 152.6253 kilojoules of heat remaining to melt some of the ice. So it says each kilogram of ice, each kilogram of ice requires 335 kilojoules to melt it completely. Therefore, the mass of ice is melted by 152.63 kilojoules of heat is to the mass of that would be. So you have mass of ice melted. equals, so you got 152 kilojoules of heat remaining. It takes 335 kilojoules per kilogram to melt one kilogram of ice. So kilojoules are going to cross out the mass of ice that is melted. is 152.63 divided by 335. So that's 0 0.4556 kilograms is the mass of ice melted. So the final mass of the water, so we'll go final mass of water. If we look up at the top here, we initially had 1.9 kilograms of water. So we go down 1.9 Final mass of the water is 1.9 kilograms plus 0 0.4556 kilograms and that'll equal 2.3556 kilograms of water. And then we go to the final mass of ice. So we initially had 0 0.7 kilograms of ice. We melted 0 0.4556 kilograms. So if we go minus 0 0.4. 556 five, kilograms that equals 0 0.2444 four kilograms of ice remaining to the final mass of water and ice the state or final answer is 2.36 kilograms and 0 0.2 Four kilograms respectively. So we didn't melt all the ice. There's still 0 0.244 kilograms of ice remaining. So our assumption that the final temperature of the mixture would be zero degrees is correct. If you guys like this video, you know, feel free to give it a thumbs up below. Subscribe to the channel. We're uploading new videos every week and we'll see you guys in the next video.